Hey guys, what's up? It's Alexander Williamson with the secret history inside of your aquarium. Today we're going to be talking about the origin of your plants in your aquarium. I'm not going to be doing like in-depth coverage of each plant. That'll be another video or past videos, but I'm just going to kind of go through and name off where things are from and kind of show you which plants are which. This is in the interest of I want to do some biome tanks coming on here and I want to do some reshuffling. So first of all, first of all, we've got your Kabamba, uh, this bristled stuff here, right here. And uh, let's see where the rest of it is. There's some more back in here. And that is actually from America. So that is from Carolina, uh, North Carolina and southward into Texas through the south. Uh, along with um, that, we've also got uh, Elodia, um, which has, um, it, it's from the south as well and it can grow farther north too and then we've got uh dwarf hair grass so let's see this is dwarf hair grass here not not this stuff back here but this stuff here and there's actually some guppy grass caught on it which is nice too because guppy grass is also from north america so these ones are colder water species originally um, the dwarf hair grass, there's some healthier dwarf, dwarf hair grass right back there. Uh, this stuff here, um, this is, uh, Cypress, uh, what is it called? Cypress, um, hill fry. And this is from, let me take a look. I've got a cheat sheet here. It's hard to keep track of all of this. Uh, but the Cypress Hellfry is from Asia. So this is also known as like water sh bamboo shoots. Um, kind of interesting. It also cre creeps into China, India, uh, Bangladesh, uh, and Vietnam. It's still a colder water plant. It's not like a full tropical plant. Then we've got the the temple plants, which are these red plants. Um, there's a lot of different temple plants from like all the way green until into um, various other colors like red, purple, brown, yellowish colors. Um, I'm trying to see here in this tank. I'll, we'll walk you over to another tank. There's some uh, cardinalis that's really dark purple there and then there's more of like a scarlet or crimson there but those are all from southeast asia so like bangladesh thailand laos cambodia um into malaysia uh all fresh water obviously all these plants are fresh water uh the fl the fern back here this is a red flaming sword fern and this is an amazonian plant um it is uh, capable of turning bright colors. It needs some iron in the water, um, and then it also likes flowing water more. Now, the tallest plants in the tank, the wisteria, this is in its water form, and wisteria grows everywhere from Sri Lanka, India, all the way over to Southeast Asia, and there's reports in Northern Australia of it also growing wild. Um, some of that could be imported or on boats going back and forth, but this is the wisteria in its water form. When it's in its land form, you get, see this one's still turning. It has, uh, it has unhealthy, yeah, there's the finger. So it has these, these sections here of like, uh, roughage and leaves and that dies away and then it sprouts this new, um, more spindly plant. So then we've got some Mayaka here that was one of the tallest plants shortly after I got it. And uh, the Mayaka is from uh, North America and it is definitely seen as a weed, seaweed of the fresh water. Uh, I started with these strands when they were yay tall, about four five weeks ago and I've been able to split it off, put it in other tanks. Um, it may overrun things quickly. S next we have everyone's favorite Java fern. Now these are a ginormous species or a ginormous uh, example of it. They were grown outside of water to get that 
that height and everything um, because this tank is over two feet tall, uh, 40 gallons. And I've got it planted around. There's different kinds of that. There's Wendelov and there's um, skinny sort, uh, skinny uh, Java fern. This is a skinnier type here versus like over here we've got a broadleaf or just plain old Java fern. And as the name implies, Java fern is from Java, which is Indonesia. Um, and also Southeast Asia. Down here, I'll get a better shot in the next aquarium, but we've got the shrimp loving it, but we've got a uh, Java moss, and Java moss is also from, wouldn't you know, uh, it is from Java, and it grows all over the world now because of it being spread. So Monte Carlo is what you're looking at here. And in this tank, we've got a little bit of different stuff because it is the shrimp and endler tank and the cherry shrimp to be specific and coal, coal shrimp. Uh, also, there's some albino ram's horns in here. But um, in here, we've got our Anubius, which is an African plant. One of the leaves isn't doing so hot. I think I pinched it off with a rock, but there's some new growth too, so... Uh, hopefully it pulls through, does fine. There's a start of wisteria. I just wanted that in here because it sucks out the nitrogen. Maple leaves, which of course are from North America and Europe. And then um, we have uh, cardinalis uh, plants here. There's two different varieties. These bright pink ones are basically shoots that they sell you because they're popular. A lot of times they melt away and then they mature into the greener tops there. Uh, they live outside of the water as well, and those are from North America in the Carolinas, in the Everglades, uh, Louisiana swamps, things like that. Now we've got a cryptocorn, two different cryptocorns here. So we've got a cryptocorn back here, that kind of dark green plant. And then we've got another one that is a darker, like, I don't know, not navy green, I guess, next to it. Uh, the cryptocorns are definitely both from Asia. Um, along with that, we've got the dwarf hairgrass in here. We've got um, a couple other kinds of variants that will be living in... Um, Probably North America, um, a couple of them, I'm not positive, but they're one of three kinds, and they'd either be living in North America or Cuba. Um, the dwarf baby tears um, also that have, are floating around a little bit because they came from another tank, which we'll stop at next. Uh, those are from Cuba, uh, specifically the dwarf variety, um, whereas baby tears are from uh the whole Caribbean island chain as well as parts of South and Central America. Uh, this is more uh, Java fern back here, or I mean Java moss back here, sorry. And that's from Java, like I said earlier, or Indonesia, the old name for... Java's the old name for Indonesia. It's also uh, the island, I believe, the biggest island. Um, and then we've got Saswasertong, and that grows all over the world in, in th from Europe, the U.S. to Asia um, in different varieties. It is a really interesting one. I highly recommend that you check out the videos on Kabamba and Sawasertang, uh, as well as Java ferns uh, at the end of this video if you want some in-depth history with some interesting crossover. Now this is more of my river tank in that it is flowing. Um, it's flowing a little bit, not crazy. There's that Mayaka uh, sprouting. And then we've got some more um, Cryptocorn Undulata. Uh, we've got Wisteria pulling out nitrogen again. Um, we've got Monte Carlo up here, uh, and then we also have some uh, algae and some uh, dwarf baby tears. There's no CO2 or anything in this tank, so that's kind of interesting that, that, that it's surviving so well. I, I'm impressed. The temple plant, same deal. There's no iron other than the iron in these rocks, and that temple plant is definitely from... Uh, uh, Asia, you know, it's from 
uh, Sri Lanka up into India, and uh, all your, as a general rule, this totally has exceptions, but as a general rule, you know, your Rotalia and um, all those things, uh, your Hygrophilia, your Cryptocorns, your uh, Valcinaria, your Alternantheria, your uh, Ricotia, or um, also your Willow Moss, um, your Cypress Hellfry, all that stuff is going to be coming from Asia. Whereas Africa has plants that you would, I mean, I don't know, kind of think of as jungly. I know there's jungles in all these places. But um, the Amana gracilis, uh, Anubius, uh, the gold coin Anubius back there that I showed you, that was um, that was an African plant. Uh, water lilies, like Egyptian water lilies, I don't have any of those right now, but those are an African plant. Um, your Valcinaria spiralis, uh, which is, it looks like Valcinaria leaves, but it has tight spirals like a helix. Don't have that either. It's, it's a spendy one. It's usually $20 or more per, uh, clump. But then the other one, uh, water lettuce that grows on top of the water. We'll see if we have any left in here. Um, I think I pulled it all out probably. It's back in the other tank. Um, but it grows on top. And uh, I'll show it to you again at the end. Um, the other thing is we have white ribbon plant, also known as spider plant. So this is an interesting one. So spider plant, they sell at PetSmart, Petco, and they show it in the tanks as though it's an underwater plant. I have a whole video rant on that. You can check that out uh, also on, the chan on my channel. But I wanted to show you what happens when you don't plant that underwater. So ta-da! This is what happens when you don't plant it underwater. You get narrow leaves and they spill out all over and they run little leaders going all over the place. So um, it's really meant to be growing in like cypress, you know, swamps and things like that. Even though it's an African plant, it has taken hold in Louisiana and other places like that because of the plant trade. Um, I was going to show you guys the water lettuce, this stuff here uh, floating on top. That is going uh, to be from Lake Victoria specifically. And it has an interesting property, which let's see if we can get it here. It has little teeny hairs on it, and it actually allows it to trap oxygen in its own little atmosphere almost uh, on top of the plant. And let's see if we can zoom in and actually see the little hair type thing. So that, it looks like a cat's tongue, right? And that traps air and gas in between. And when it gets wet, it kind of puddles up on top and it almost looks like ice or something. So that's kind of cool. Uh, there's that um, Anubius that I was talking about. That was the one with the leaf dying. More temple plant here. Um... The last one that I was going to show you that I've got heavily planted in my tanks is um, the Repents. Uh, that is growing here. It's growing down here. Uh, oh boy, where else do we have it? Uh, the other tank has a lot. Well, I guess it's growing right here with the temple plant, different species of temple plant. We've got peacock fern back in there. Um, that stuff melts like crazy. It's questionable whether it's a good underwater plant. Probably not. Um, and then we also have, uh, the tall, long Elodia back there, uh, up back up in there. Um... Bacopa, that's another U.S. one. Elodia is a U.S. one. Uh, Hornwort, that's another U.S. one. Uh, but this is uh, Ludwigia reopens or repens, uh, the one that I was talking about. And that grows in South America and uh, the Amazon and Central America. Um, North America, just retouching back on things, um, You've got your dwarf hair grass, your elodia, and then you've got guppy grass, which grows very far north. That grows up into the Great Lakes. Your mayaka, that can grow fairly far north. And then everyone's favorite, duckweed. Duckweed can grow anywhere. No, duck duckweed takes over tanks really easily. I try to avoid it when I go to shops um, if I can. Here's more um, repents 
plants or repens plants uh, back there. There's more cypress hellfry. Um, over here, we have another uh, set of some temple plants that are of a different variety. Back here, we've got a bushier purple kabamba. You can kind of see, let's see if you can see in the right light. It has a purple hint to it at the right angle. It's almost like an iridescent look. Okay, here's a better example. Right up there, it looks kind of dirty, but <laughs> but it's purple. Bear with me. And then the last thing I wanted to show you in the tanks today is uh, we've got uh, Java Fern Windlove, and that's also from Southeast Asia, but it's just a varietal that frays at the top. And I've got that along with Java Moss, and then kind of a wall of repens and uh, uh, sterogene repens are the main ones that I have here. Um, those ones are really dense, as is Bacopa. Um, and the Bacopa, where are you, Bacopa? Um, trying to find it. it. Where did I plant it? But it almost feels like a rubbery plant. Um, it's kind of interesting, and it looks like it's growing upside down. Like, the leaves turn upside down, and it's green. Um, you know, I've kind of got... Oh, I've also got willow moss, which um, is different than java moss. It has these little red nodes on it. We've got more guppy grass down here. Um... And I think that's kind of the tour. I've got probably another 10 species in the tank that I have not really researched or identified. Um, but I kind of just wanted to go over what's in my tanks, where they're from, and just kind of uh, give an overview if you guys ever wondered where each of those plants are from, how we have these biomes all over. And, you know, it'd be really easy to do an Asian tank be pretty easy to do an African tank. Uh, Southeast Asia and the islands would be easy. Central America, if you include Florida and like Georgia, um, that would be extremely easy to get a hold of plants from that. Um, especially if you live down there, then just go digging and just make sure they're in quarantine and get some of the little ickies out of them. Um, and then South America, obviously, you've got your sword ferns and your Elodia too, um, also growing there. You've got your dwarf hair grass, you've got mayaka, you've got, um, you know, interesting little plants, uh, growing there. Oh, and then I've got back behind, you can't see it, but a banana plant, which looks like bananas, and then just a plant growing out of the top. It, uh, like little green bananas. That's from Florida. Uh, it's also found in other areas that have mangrove swamps in the northern and western hemisphere. But if you learned a little something, I know this was a crash course on kind of just running around and looking at different um, plants and species, but I wanted to show you what was in my tanks and uh, kind of talk a little bit about them, but I'm going to come back and like talk about why wisteria is great for sucking out nitrogen, but it grows super fast. Why certain uh, plants can take heavy metals out, elodia, guppy grass, those can take heavy metals out of things. And as long as none of your fish are munching on it, you can then pull that out of the tank. Um, certain fungi and bacteria also do that. Certain rock does that. So we'll come back and revisit that in future videos, but I kind of wanted to just show you my tank as it is and um, show you a sampling of some of the plants I have. I should have some new plants coming soon and when they arrive we'll talk a little bit about all of that. So uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you take care of your plants, your fish, and yourselves guys. So keep on swimming. Stay tuned. If you want please support me. If you stayed tuned for 20 minutes you are awesome. You're a fish nerd. You're like me. And uh, probably a plant nerd. Maybe you're a botanical nerd and you didn't know it. Maybe aquascaping is your new calling. But in any case, if you stuck around this long, um, consider uh, supporting me on, uh, on uh, either by liking, sharing, or subscribing. Subscribing, you're just going to get more content. That None of that costs any money. And then if you want rewards and other perks, 
check me out on Patreon. I've got a page. It helps keep the lights on, keeps the fish fed, and also uh, keeps interesting new plants and gadgets and things like that coming in so I can teach you guys and talk about them. Um, I don't know everything, so I'd love to hear if I, if I messed anything up in that description, if something is now just invasive and I found out that it was from somewhere and misspoke, um, let me know. Uh, I've got so many plants in my tank, uh, that I've not really established biomes, uh, with the plants, just with the fish. Like, this is all Venezuelan fish, um, or Trinidad fish. Uh, but, in any case, thanks for staying tuned. Take care of your fish, take care of yourself, and uh, keep on swimming, guys. Bye.